This episode is brought to you by Monday.com, the only team management tool you need. Go to Monday.com and use the code Infographics to start your free trial now with a special template from the Infographics show. The date is July 2, 1881, and President James Garfield is walking through the Baltimore and Potomac train station with his two sons in tow. Accompanying the President of the United States and his sons is Secretary of State James Blair. The President, the man at the helm of the most powerful nation in the Western Hemisphere, has no additional protection. There's not even a police presence as the President, his son, and the Secretary of State enjoy their stroll. Nearly two decades earlier, President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated while enjoying a play, and yet the act did nothing to spur the protection of the leader of the United States. In fact, even the Founding Fathers had seen no need to protect the US President, and the White House itself was protected only by a single police officer. Anybody wishing to force their way into the President's office would have to pass this lone police officer and a secretary. There was no need for protecting the President of the United States in the Founding Fathers' eyes. Though assassinations were common throughout Europe, the United States was a democratic nation that was free of such troubles. Assassinations were, after all, the result of an oppressed people rebelling against a system that could never change. Here in the US, the people were free to vote for their leader, and at worst all they'd have to do is wait eight years for a new one. The assassination of Abraham Lincoln was seen as a historical flute, a last dying spasm from the Civil War, the nation's most divisive conflict to date. In a way, it was almost inevitable that an angry ex-Confederate would seek out revenge against the Union North for the defeat of the South. Thus, after Lincoln's assassination, nothing was done to help protect the American president. On that fateful July 2, 1881 afternoon, President James Garfield would be approached by a man, Charles Guiteau, who would then shoot him twice in the chest. Bystanders to the shooting immediately grabbed Guiteau and subdued him, while medical attention was sent for. The President of the United States was not even followed by a medical professional in case of an emergency. Garfield would go on to die of his wounds 79 days later, and just like that, America's political naivete was shattered forever. Incredibly though, not even Garfield's assassination would convince US lawmakers that the President needed to be protected. It would finally take the assassination of President William McKinley in 1901 for Congress to authorize a federal agency to protect the American President. The task fell on the Secret Service, which had been established in the 1860s to combat counterfeiting, and a year later the White House became officially closed to the public as the Secret Service created its first presidential detail. The protection of the president would gradually expand to protecting not just the man himself, but his family as well. Eventually, the vice president was also granted protection, and in 1968, after the killing of Senator Robert F. Kennedy, assassinated President John F. Kennedy's brother, Secret Service protection extended to presidential candidates. Though protocol stated that the candidates only started receiving protection a set time before Election Day, in 2007, the Secret Service, out of fear over racially inspired violence, extended protection for the future President Barack Obama. In the past, presidents were protected by gunmen who were trained to spot potential threats in a crowd. If giving a speech or making another such public appearance, trained sharpshooters may be present in order to ward off sniper attacks. As technology and techniques evolved, the Secret Service has expanded its role and capabilities both, and today a whole host of measures are in place to protect the American president. The job of protecting the president today is a very expensive and involved one. Specific plans for protecting the president and the tools used are naturally kept top secret, and thus very little is known about the specifics of the security that goes into keeping the American president safe. Protection starts physically on the president himself. A president's suit is made of a secret bullet-resistant fiber, which can help seriously mitigate the damage caused by a low-caliber bullet. While they won't do much to stop a high-caliber rifle bullet shot by a sniper, the suit is quite adept at stopping low-caliber rounds such as those that might be used by a gunman lurking in a crowd. Of course, that gunman would have to evade detection by the Secret Service, which is the President's next layer of protection. These men and women are trained to spot potential threats before they get a chance to approach the President. They are experts on human behavior and trained to identify the signs of mental illness or the extreme stress that a secret gunman might be experiencing as they prepare to fire on the President. They are also on constant alert for anyone trying too hard to get too close to the President. They have intercepted individuals in a crowd on numerous occasions. It's not just the Secret Service that you can see that's protecting the President, it's also the agents you can't see. 
Like with many security details, the Secret Service employs a sort of peacock strategy, meaning that they make the men and women around the president very obvious for all to see. This intimidating display of force and capability helps deter would-be attackers, but it also serves to keep the attention of an attacker on the visible agents. Meanwhile, agents in plain clothes work their way through the crowd. They listen to conversations, watch individuals, and even surreptitiously pat down threatening individuals as they press against them with the crowd. Overwatching the president is another set of agents that are typically not visible to the public, and these are highly trained marksmen. These sharpshooters find advantageous positions to fire on not the president himself, but other positions that they've identified in advance that could be troublesome and might house a shooter. Typically though, long before a president arrives at a location, these marksmen will scan the environment and identify problem areas where a sniper could hide, and then local law enforcement is dispatched there to secure them in advance. A layer of technology also helps to protect the president. As he's traveling around or sometimes in a public place, Secret Service agents may employ a device that kills all radio and cellular signals in a certain radius. This is meant to prevent a would-be assassin from remotely detonating a planted bomb. Although once more before a president goes anywhere, a team of bomb-sniffing dogs is dispatched just for such threats. Today though, the threat of a bombing comes from a new threat vector, an armed drone. While details are extremely sparse, it's rumored that the Secret Service utilizes an automated anti-drone device that uses either high-speed projectiles, EMP interference, or a laser to disable any incoming drones. The device is rumored to be worked into the design of one of the presidential entourage vehicles, though a deployable device can be set up in public places, such as when the president attends a sporting event. Speaking of vehicles, the president is probably the single most well-protected motorist in the world. That's thanks to the presidential limo, known as the Beast. Once more, details are classified, but it is known that the limo can resist even a direct hit by an RPG and is essentially bulletproof. The windows can stand up to armor-piercing ammunition, and the only window that actually rolls down in the entire vehicle is the driver's window, which lowers exactly three inches, just enough to speak to a Secret Service agent running alongside the limo. The doors are about eight inches thick and incorporate ceramic armor to disrupt the impact of high-velocity rounds. Each door weighs as much as a cabin door on a Boeing 757 jet. The front of the vehicle features both night vision and thermal cameras, so that the driver can operate the vehicle no matter the conditions on the outside. The underside of the vehicle is protected by a steel layer of armor almost half a foot thick, designed to protect the vehicle from even a mine buried under the road. The tires are made of puncture and shred resistant Kevlar and have a steel rim inside letting the vehicle speed away at a top speed of 60 miles per hour even with flat tires. The rear compartment where the president sits is itself basically a completely independent environment. The small interior window that connects the president to his driver can only be opened by the president himself, and the entire rear cab is completely airtight, allowing the limousine to operate even in a nuclear, biological, or chemical warfare environment. Inside the limo, there are also numerous weapons and accessories for the president and any Secret Service agents with him to protect themselves with, to include pump-action shotguns and 556 carbine rifles and side panels. Tear gas grenades are also available for non-lethal threats. The gas tank is armor-plated and filled with a specially engineered foam which prevents the fuel from exploding even if it suffers a direct hit. Inside the trunk, the limo is outfitted with an automated firefighting system, which can put out fires anywhere in the limo, as well as an oxygen supply that can keep the president alive for a classified amount of time. The limo itself is directly connected to the vice president, the White House, and the Pentagon via jam-resistant extremely high frequency and other classified communications equipment. From inside the limousine, the president can respond to any national or global emergency, and even command the US's nuclear forces. In the case of the worst coming to pass, several refrigerated bottles of the president's own blood is kept in the limo at all times, along with first aid and emergency transfusion equipment. The Beast is also rumored to pack an additional accessory, which is kept extremely classified, and that's the recent addition by President Obama of an automated chain gun which can be deployed from the trunk of the limousine. Whether this is true or not, what is known is that amongst the 22 vehicles that form the president's entourage, there are in fact several similarly equipped vehicles. These vehicles share a design with those used by the Department of Energy to secretly transport nuclear weapons across the United States via regular road and highway networks. These nuke convoys, as they're known to insiders, typically consist of an armor-reinforced semi-truck that's constantly escorted in the front and the rear by several SUVs or armored vehicles, camouflaged to look like RVs. 
The President's vehicle entourage includes several of these chain-gunned equipped SUVs, which feature a chain gun not dissimilar to that used on American combat helicopters and mounted on a rising platform that's hidden inside the fake cab section of the SUV. The chain guns can be fired from the safety of the bullet-resistant SUV, using a video feed system exactly like that of American military combat vehicles such as the Striker. Along with an unknown number of secret chain gun SUVs, the convoy also includes at least one air threat response unit, which is equipped with short-range anti-air missiles, also hidden inside a rising platform that lifts out of the fake cab of the SUV it's equipped on. While traveling, the President is kept safe aboard Air Force One, which itself can operate in even nuclear, biological, and chemical environments. The big plane is equipped with a great deal of defensive countermeasures, many of them top secret, and it's known to have numerous electronic countermeasures, decoys, chaff, flares, and laser systems designed to burn out the seeker warheads on incoming missiles. There are no known offensive weapons that have been publicly acknowledged aboard Air Force One, but there are rumors that the big plane is equipped with long-range anti-air missiles and possibly a new airborne laser system capable of targeting hostile aircraft. Speed, though, is a major defensive feature of Air Force One, and though top speed is classified, it's been clocked moving at an incredible Mach 0.85, which is just shy of the sound barrier. For such a big jet, that is quite the feat. The President of the United States is quite well protected and is possibly the most secure person on Earth. Unfortunately, all that protection comes with a very hefty price tag, which is why presidential travel is usually very tightly controlled. Even a simple trip to the golf course necessitates the movement of dozens of personnel and assets and can range in the tens of millions of dollars, all on the backs of the American taxpayer. Ever wonder how we're able to produce the infographic show? We make it happen thanks to Monday.com, the absolute best management tool available to bring projects to life that's perfect for any team no matter the size. We're making better decisions, saving time, and being more efficient than ever, which leads to better content. We've been able to automate so many processes that it's impossible to imagine how anything got done before. If you're ready to produce a show of your own or want to see how we structure our own production workflow, then head over to Monday.com and sign up to check out our custom template. No credit card required. That's Monday.com with the code Infographics. If you like this video and you want to see more, then click on this video right now or this video over here. You absolutely have to click one of them though, so do it now.